Today I'm doing cauliflower, broccoli, and red bell pepper salad. I've got about an inch of water in the pot. I brought it to a boil. There's no salt or anything in there. It's just plain old water. We're going to bring it back to a boil and uh, we'll have a lid on it. We're going to cook it for about four minutes. Now broccoli, because we only wanted to get it to the tender crisp stage because it is going to be a salad. So you're going to have to watch your cauliflower uh, real carefully to make sure that it doesn't cook too much because each one is going to be a little bit different. So there's a time range anywhere from four to eight minutes. I'm going to cook this four minutes. It's always better to start at the low end. You can check it, put the lid on it, and go some more. Now when it does come to a boil with something like cauliflower or broccoli or any other of the vegetables uh, that are in the brassica family, it's a good plan to, from time to time, just tip the lid up and let the steam escape because you're going to have a lot of sulfur compounds that are going to be going into the water and that are also some of them are volatile and if we can let that lid out, let the steam escape, we can get rid of some of those. Some of them or a lot of them are going to dissolve into the water itself, but if we can get rid of some of them, then the vegetable's not going to taste so, so strong. Again, four minutes and then we're going to come and make the next step. Okay, we're just basically blanching the cauliflower, short period of time, and then we want to drain it. Now, while it's warm, it's going to pick up the uh, flavors of the uh, dressing that we're going to put on. So I'm not going to ice it down to stop the cooking, but I am going to drain away all that water. And I'm going to start an equal amount of water going again. And we're going to do uh, broccoli the same way. Now, I'm doing it in separate pots because they cook different lengths of time. This one, I, the broccoli, I want to cook three minutes. The cauliflower is a little more dense, takes a little bit more time to cook. So after we get that uh, cooked, we want to make sure that we drain it well while we're waiting for that water to come up. And then I'm going to put it in a bowl. And we're basically going to layer the, the two or three vegetables here. Uh, just layer them up and then we're going to put a dressing over it. Put it in the refrigerator and let it sit for at least an hour for the flavors to blend. And then we'll stir it a little bit to get it going. Uh, as I said, the next one's going to be the broccoli that we're going to do. When you're purchasing or selecting or harvesting either one of these vegetables, first of all, they're both in the same family, so they're going to have some similar characteristics, but they are not identical. They're not just green and white, the same thing. The cauliflower, you want to look for white, creamy white curds. They should look basically like curds of cottage cheese. The leaves should still be nice and green. If you see any soft or black, then it's going to be past its prime. The biggest thing you want to avoid, however, is anything that's starting to spread. It's, it's gone past its prime at that point. The broccoli should still look a uh, dense and tight. There shouldn't be any opening buds when you're picking this one. Uh, you want to make sure you, with, with this one that, the, again, the leaves, if they're, if they're still attached, are still fairly healthy. If it's starting to turn yellow at all or the buds are starting to open, then it's gone past its prime and nothing you're going to do to that is going to bring it back to its, its uh, strong, nice taste again. It's just going to uh, be beyond. Okay, our, our water is uh, close enough to a boil. We're going to go ahead and put in the broccoli. Now notice I'm just using the florets on both and I want to cook this one about three minutes. Okay, our broccoli is done so we're going to drain the liquid off of it just like we did the cauliflower. I'm going to set our pot out of the way. Now a couple of things happen when we do the blanching, both on, on both vegetables. One, if I put the, the raw broccoli over here, you see the dramatic difference that we get in color. And that's in part because we eliminate the air from within the cells of the vegetable itself. Uh, also, it does a little bit of cleaning. And the side advantage is that we're also getting rid of some of the bacteria, the microorganisms. They're also being destroyed by the heat. So we have several things going on here that uh, we can be thankful for uh, as this process goes through. Now, as I mentioned, we want to drain this well. The basic reason for draining it is we don't want to water down our dressing later on. And we're just going to layer this on top of the cauliflower that we already have in there. Let's set these out of our way. And now we'll make a dressing. Well, before we do that, I want to add our last ingredient to this. Uh, I've got some red bell pepper, basically one red bell pepper that's been chopped. You can chop it as, as finely as you want. The broccoli and the cauliflower, you do want to make sure that you cut them so that they get down to about the size uh, of a bite. Uh, it's uh, not supposed to happen that if somebody's eating a salad and they have to cut the, the broccoli or the cauliflower in order to put it in their mouth. So you want to get it down to a pretty much the same size as uh, of pieces for both, one, uh, both of those vegetables. Um, I've got two tablespoons of uh, fresh lemon juice. 
three tablespoons of olive oil, and I'm using the real thing here, not the extra virgin olive oil, because I want a little bit more flavor. In general, when you work with something from the Brassica family, like broccoli or cauliflower, uh, because they have fairly strong flavors, and the, it, particularly when you're cooking, the flavors get stronger as you to continue to cook, you need some fairly strong seasonings to stand up to them. So uh, in addition, I've added an eighth of a teaspoon of chili powder, an eighth of a teaspoon of oregano, a nice healthy clove of uh, fresh garlic that we've minced. You could press it if you wanted to. I kind of like the, the little bit of chunkiness that it, it gives when you just chop it fairly, fairly small. And then about a fourth of a teaspoon of both pepper and salt. Now, if you uh, are on a reduced sodium diet or watching the sodium content, you can uh, cut down the amount of salt that you put in, maybe not put any, you could use an alternative. This one, because we have some of those nice other flavors, uh, you could probably get by without adding the salt, if, uh, particularly if you're not real salt sensitive. Uh, we do know that people who have uh, extremely sensitive palates, however, uh, they kind of like the salt there. It helps them cover up some of the, the bitterness that they're gonna perceive in some of these vegetables. The dressing's gonna go on, just drizzled over the top. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. And just cover it with some saran or some other kind of uh, plastic wrap and put that in the refrigerator for about an hour. Uh, after that time, you're gonna come back. We'll pretend that we've had an hour go by and then really gently do the stirring because you don't wanna break up any of those beautiful uh, cauliflower or garlic cloves that you've got there. This is all there is to this one. You can make it a little bit ahead of time. As I said, it needs to be in the refrigerator for at least an hour. You don't want it to be in the refrigerator, however, for a really long time because of the effect that the acid ingredient is gonna have on the chlorophyll. It's gonna dull it down to that olive drab color around the edges and it's just not gonna look quite as pretty. I hope you'll give this one a try. It's broccoli, or excuse me, cauliflower, broccoli, and red bell pepper salad. For Oklahoma Gardening, this is Barbara Brown. Thank you.